Good evening, ski racing fans. We are under the lights at Howelson Hill in Steamboat Springs, Colorado for the 2024 NCAA Championship Slalom. Two days are in the books. Now it's time for the shakeup. It's slalom night. Under the lights, Howelson Hill, the place where anything can happen as we look at the lights of the All Out Race Hill, where we were for the GS just two days ago. Things were kind of mellow over there in the sunshine compared to what we're going to see tonight here at Howlson Hill. This slope was watered earlier in the week. All the collegiate coaches pitched in to help make a great surface. The temps are falling tonight, which is allowing the snow to set up. I think we're gonna have fantastic racing conditions here on the face of Howlson Hill in front of a big crowd tonight. And the slalom. The place where things can happen. The margins for error are so small and the standings can change in an instant with the slalom racing here, especially on a hill like Howelson Hill. Howelson Hill, an iconic hill where these teams will be trying to maintain or improve their position. Indeed, it's our four-time champion in a row, the University of Utah, sitting atop the standings at the midway point of this 2024 event. Can they make it five in a row? The University of Colorado is 56 points behind. That's still in touch, but they need a big night tonight at the University of Denver just behind there in the same boat. Dartmouth made a move yesterday in the cross-country events, and they find themselves in fourth position now. It's going to take some really strong skiing from them and some luck to move up into contention for one of those top two spots. Montana State, one point behind them, also having a solid day on the Nordic side. University of Vermont, perhaps the last team that truly has a chance to potentially compete for one of those top spots here. But they're going to need some help and some amazing skiing here on the slopes of Howelson Hill. The racers getting ready up top as the sun has gone down. The night sky darkening over the beautiful town of Steamboat Springs. This Howlson Hill Racecourse just across the Yampa River from downtown. It's an amazing place for a night slalom for these NCAA championships. Nine times the events have been hosted here, the NCAA championships in Steamboat Springs. And Howlson Hill always serves up uh, an interesting result as we see our forerunners getting ready up near the top. We have some pre-event pageantry here with the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club, our local program, getting ready to go. It's the national anthem begins. Beautiful ski down, the local kids excited about tonight's racing. Great recorded rendition from the University of Colorado marching band to kick off these NCAA championship slalom racing. In fact, right there, our coach with the CU band, that is none other than NCAA slalom champion in 1995, Scott Wither. Steamboat local sneaking in there. How about that, Scott? He's also helping out as our chief of course today. There have been some NCAA champions out of Steamboat Springs, starting with Buddy Werner, who raced on his mountain, Mount Werner, for the giant slalom. 
Scott Wither took the NCAA title in 1995. Jet Seymour, his younger brother, Trey, competing in the event today. Jet winning it in 2019, now on the World Cup for the Stiefel U.S. Ski Team. So some great history here on the slopes of Howlson Hill. 100 Winter Olympians in skiing and snowboarding have come from this very slope. And some fantastic NCAA skiers as well. Setting up for a perfect night tonight. The snow that has been around Steamboat all week has finally let up. And I think we're going to be treated to some amazing racing here today. The crowds continue to gather here at the slope. So I was talking about a little bit earlier, the hill here at Howlson Hill. It's a short but sweet hill, one of the shorter slalom hills on the circuit, but there is no room to breathe anywhere on this trail. Right out of the start, we'll see a steep road section that is uh, surprisingly steep for the racers, and then they drop onto the first pitch, which is a very technical section. The saddle where all the coaches are standing right there is perhaps the one reprieve a couple of flat gates before they drop over onto the second pitch in front of the crowd. And they start to feel the energy from below. And does that help them build their speed to the finish line? Or does the pressure of this night become too great? I've spoken with several past athletes who have competed here at these NCAA championships here at Howlson Hill. And some of the finest skiers, skiers with World Cup experience and and veterans of the sport made the comment to me that this slalom event here under the lights was the most nervous they've ever been in a start gate. It's something that the racers want so badly to perform well in front of the crowd, to perform well for their team. They know how much is at stake for this slalom event. And they really are hoping to put forth their best skiing here tonight. helping to make sure that our timing is working that our course crew is ready that our camera folks are ready and it'll be our first look here first run course for the women and we're underway with our first forerunner out of the gate this road section up here steeper than you think and then the break with first pitch right in here. And this section always technical for the racers. It looks like a tight tonight. A couple of hairpins and rhythm changes in there. See a little flare on the top. A little some sugar snow above the watered surface. But we'll get that pushed off and have a great race course today. Now this lower pitch. A side hill on that side of the course. The left-footed turns fall away from the sky. So important that they stay over their feet and in good balance. Now across the, the finish line. That looks like it's going to be a good one. It looks to me like a technical set. Some turns, but nothing tricky, which is how a champion be set. It requires some good technical and tactical scheme. No tricks thrown in their gadgets, things that perhaps one team has, the core setter's been practicing with their team, but it's not something that is normal to see for the other. So a good test here tonight. As our set comes down, we've got four forerunners before we see the skills of our Sir Nor brand from the University of Denver. Our forerunners having fun. They don't give the pressure that our competitors carry here tonight. These University of Colorado skiers that are forerunning. The case of schools like the University of Colorado, only three ski gender are allowed to compete in these NCAA championships. And schools like Colorado have advanced four or sometimes five skiers based on the qualification credit. Then the coaches have to whittle it down to just three. And that's always coaches. It's tough for the athletes, but... Uh, these University of Colorado athletes getting participate by forerunning and put on a show, so tonight for them. And 
They don't have to deal with the pressure, and then they go cheer on their teammate. So our fourth forerunner gets ready to go in the start. Here comes our final forerunner. Local girl, Nicole Roundtree Williams, competing for Colorado Mountain College at campus right here in Steamboat. Their cafeteria literally overlooks right straight across the river. Huge wall, ceiling to floor windows. Perfect view of this Howells and Hill race slope. Colorado Mountain College program, NCAA eligible. Their only sports team is the ski team. They do compete on the RMISA circuit with the NCAA schools. Great to see a couple Colorado Mountain College skiers out here for running the event tonight. They've been work helped prep the slope before the event as well. And a good report for runners. So that means we're ready for racing here. The night slalom at the hill. Nora Brand from the University of Denver will be our first competitor on the course. Nora second in the 2023 Slalom Championships. So she is gonna be one to watch. That number one bib draw should be advantageous today. So the stage is set for Nora Brand. As she looks down the hill, looks out over the lights of town. Now it's time. Let the poles over the gate. And we're underway. Slalom racing action here at Howlson Hill. Nora Brand from the University of Denver on course. Nora has had success on this hill before. The senior from the University of Denver Pioneers. Many a race on these slopes. She's got some wins to her name. She was 13th in the giant slalom. She'd really love to shine today. It looks like solid scheme to me from Brandt, taking advantage of that early position. Perhaps a little bit safe as Brand makes her way to the finish, but it's been a good, clean run for Brand, and she's going to set the pace with a time of 43.08. So that will set the pace. As Ansley Prophet now from the University of Alaska, Anchorage takes the course, and I see a little bit more energy right away from Ansley and her skiing. Pushing strong against those skis. This will be a test to see how the snow is holding up. It was watered by the coaches to try to have more of an icy surface that's consistent throughout. It looks to me like the top layer at least is still a little bit soft. Prophet getting a little bit low there on the steep part of the second pitch. Getting thrown a little bit wide there on that red gate, but Ansley Prophet definitely charging. She's comfortable on this hill, having spent a year at Colorado Mountain College, and Prophet will move into the first position by nearly a second. We've got a Seawolf on top here with two racers down, and now it's the University of Utah's turn. Kaya Norby. Kaya Norby, the veteran. Looking strong, Kaya, a solid slalom skier. This is good looking skiing as she approaches the saddle section now. A couple flat turns right in here. Now the hill breaks over. Those right-footed turns critical, the hill falls away. She's done well through that section, Norby. A veteran, the University of Utah on a hot streak. And Norby getting him off to a good start here tonight across into second position with a 42.60, just under a half second back. And the University of Utah, they need solid finishes. They don't need razzle-dazzle tonight. Just top finishes and they'll be in great shape. Now it's bid number four. Looks like Allie Resnick from Dartmouth College. Allie's got some laps down this hill, having grown up in Vail, Colorado. Did her training with Ski and Snowboard Club Vail. Resnick looking good, a little bit late in her pressure down here, but to me, she's carrying some good speed. 
Definitely charging. This is good skiing for the Dartmouth skier. Dartmouth needs some strong results from today. And she's across into second place, just 0.13 back of our leader, Ansley Prophet. And now our first University of Vermont skier. This is Hannah Nathorst. Hannah, the post-grad athlete at the University of Vermont out of Stockholm, Sweden. I'm sorry, she's a junior athlete out of Stockholm, Sweden. She was 11th in last year's NCAA championship slalom. It was a solid result. Her slalom skills will be called upon today. The Catamounts need some huge results. Hannah skiing well down here. She's got good rhythm through that final section. The flush is how you carry the speed onto the flats. She, Hannah is really charging as she comes to the line and Hannah will cross into fifth position. Just over a second behind our leader. So she's in touch. Her teammate now on course, this is Sydney Timmerman. Hails from Calgary. The sophomore nursing student. She was first teamer for the Eastern Intercollegiate Ski Association this season. And skiing solid up top, no mistakes to speak of. She won the slalom at Dartmouth earlier this year. So Timmerman we know has the speed. Losing that outside ski just a little bit on those final turns coming off the pitch into the flush. Timmerman now charging to the line and Timmerman will cross with a solid run into fourth position. Just over a half second behind our leader. All right, and all three in a row, the University of Vermont, back to back to back, Justine Clement, the caboose of the Catamounts team looking to put down a fast run. Clement from Beckencourt, Canada, senior biomedical engineering student. She's charging tonight. Finished ninth in the NCAA slalom last year at the championships. So she's looking to bump that up. Can she get a podium spot into the top three? Oh, and bucked it out wide there, getting just hung up. And a massive mistake right before the flats at the finish. Our first skier to suffer a major mistake here on the slopes. And Justine Clement. Ah, oh, the frustration showing. She knows that was a critical error. All right, now from Middlebury College, it's Mika Anriha from Montreal, Canada, a junior studying economics at Middlebury. Riha, a little bit late up on the upper pitch. It's a charging attitude from Riha, but it's a little bit behind the course up there. Looks to me like the snow is holding up well up there. She now makes her way onto the lower pitch. Getting a little bit twisted and sideways there. That's the most technical section of the course right in there. Now the hill starts to level out just a bit through that flush. That's how you maintain the speed onto the flats. Riha to the finish. And she crosses into a tie for fourth position. Just about a half second back. A solid run for Riha. Now from the University of Denver, here comes Sarah Rask. Sarah from Stockholm, Sweden. She was the third place finisher in last year's NCAA championships in the slalom. She finished ninth in the GS two days ago. Rask, a lot of the hopes for the University of Denver ride on the shoulders of Sarah Rask. She's been such a dominant skier in her first two years for the Pioneers. And she is skiing well. Again, these Western schools have had quite a few laps on Howelson Hill, so they have an advantage from the knowledge gained on this slope. And Rask charging to the finish. She reaches across, and the time, four tenths back of our leader, puts her into third position. Ansley Prophet still holding on to the lead as Magdalena Lusak from the University of Colorado pushes out of the start. She was the winner in the giant slalom two days ago. And Lusak, a veteran of the World Cup. She's scored World Cup points multiple times this season in this discipline. 
And this is a run to watch. The University of Colorado need big results from their steers tonight to have closed the gap up to the University of Utah and Lusak. Looking solid on the upper section. This is the technical spot right here. Lusak pretty strong through that. Little bit late, but it looks like she's carrying her speed. As she approaches the bottom, Lusak charges to the line and Lusak will cross with a time of 42.09. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new leader by five hundredths of a second. That is the start that the Buffaloes needed. And now it's time for Montana State. Christiane Bekestad on course. Bekestad fifth in the slalom last year in white face. At these NCAA championships. So Bekestad just as important for the Bobcats to post a strong result to get things going tonight. And Bekestad is one that can do it. This is good solid skiing up on the top section. Across the saddle she comes and now on to the lower pitch. Little bit more time, it looks like, on the edges for Bekestad than we just saw from Lusak putting down such a fast run. Now Bekestad steps on the gas as she approaches the finish. Bekestad reaching to the line, and she'll cross into 10th position. Zoe Zimmerman now up next from Dartmouth College. Zimmerman on course. Zimmerman, the sophomore out of Guilford, New Hampshire. A national team member. Aspires to ski like A.J. Hurt. Man, A.J. Hurt had such a great season going this year. In the Stiefel U.S. ski team, it was so fun to watch. Zimmerman skiing some nice turns of her own here now. Onto the lower pitch she comes. A strong skier, Zimmerman, for Dartmouth. The big green going wild down here at the bottom as Zimmerman reaches across the line, and it's a good run for Zimmerman into fourth position, just three-tenths of a second back. A nice run for Zoe. All right, now it's Hoffman time, the University of Utah skier. What a streak she is on having won both the slalom and giant slalom last year, finishing in second position on Wednesday. Hoffman, part of the invincible force that has been the University of Utah. They've been just so rock solid and steady and Hoffman just rock solid and steady on the top part of this course. A Little bit rounder line for Hoffman on the slower section, perhaps a little bit of a safe approach. Strategy comes into play on this day. And if I were JJ and Mary Joyce, I would be saying, hey, make sure you put it through the finish line. And Hoffman has done just that in the ninth position. It's a solid result for the University of Utah skier, I think, playing the role of role player today. Next on course from Middlebury. We've got Caitlin Finn. Katie from Canmore, Alberta, in Canada. She's 30th in the giant slalom. She's looking to step that up here in the slalom today. See the elevation above the gate for Finn, making that turn above the gate so she can accelerate through the finish of the turn. It's a good section right there before the flush for Finn as she charges to the finish line. Reaching across is Finn with a time of 43.18, puts her into 11th position. And now the University of Colorado back up to the start. Julia Toivonen on course. The host university. Pressure is high today. A big slalom day for the University of Colorado could make all of the difference. The University of Utah and the University of Colorado, both with strong Nordic teams for the Mass Start Classic race tomorrow. Boy, if these Alpiners could bring them back up tight with Utah, we'll have one heck of a showdown on the cross-country trails to finish up these NCAA championships. Julia Toivonen skiing well on the lower section, getting a little airborne between her turns. And the skis come off the snow. The edges are hit hard. 
in between, and it looks like that has been an issue for Toivonen as she skis into 14th position through the finish, but not the speed that she was hoping for. Now from the University of New Hampshire, Tilda Kandel on course. From Lexen, Sweden, a sophomore studying analytical economics. Tackling this house in Hill Slope, I think for the first time. No big problems on the upper section for Kandel. She skis past the big group watching at the saddle. Now she starts to hear the crowd noise as she approaches the finish. Kandel from the University of New Hampshire. Good direct line coming onto the flats. Kandel charging, and she'll cross with a great time of 42.89. Moves her up into ninth position. That is a solid result for the University of New Hampshire skier. And boy, we are tightly packed in the top 10 right now. One of the things we were looking for today is how would this slope hold up? with the watering and it looks like it's in great shape oh and carlotta marcora and a little bobble up on the road she is full send right now marcora for westminster college westminster a program without a nordic program the alpine skiers and they always have a strong stable of alpine skiers they're given the green light to go full gas. They don't have a chance to win the team title here for the overall at these NCAA championships. So the skiers can really race aggressively and try to take that Alpine title. Marcora skiing very well down here. She reaches across the time 43.35, moves her into 15th position. And now from Bates, Juliet Hoder from Stowe, Vermont. Juliet, the freshman, the only bait skier to qualify for the Alpine team here at these NCAA championships. The future is bright for Hodder. It's just a freshman qualifying for these races. Skiing well on that upper pitch. Apologies to the Hoder looking strong. We can see that the slalom skill set there for Hoder. Really nice skiing there. She's got the green light to go full gas as she makes her way across the finish and she crosses with a 44 24 into 16th position. Fired up at the start. This is Hannah Sethering. Westminster College racer. She is ready to go. Full charge right out of the gate for Sethering. Getting thrown off the tails on a few gates, but she is full charge. This is how you tackle the hill at these NCAA championships. Fearless skiing from Sethering from Westminster College. She finished 14th in the slalom last year at Whiteface. This slope, a whole different test than Whiteface Mountain. Much steeper, shorter, more elevation as well, and Sathering having no problem with it. She charges to the finish, Hannah Sathering across, and the time puts her into 16th position. Cassie Liebline now, our next competitor from the University of New Hampshire. Good energy from Liebline. The graduate student from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Getting a little bit low on that upper pitch. Pressure a little bit late, but she is really sending it here tonight. Onto the lower pitch, no problem with those fall away left footers in there. As Liebline lines up the final flush. Charging to the finish, Liebline, she'll cross. 44.76 into 19th position for Liebline. Now in the start, Ella Bromi. The Swede was fourth 
in last year's NCAA championships. A great result for the University of Alaska Anchorage. Romy sending it down there on the road. Getting a little bit rough up there on the road. That typically happens in that section. I think she's letting the skis go. She's charging well. Romy, good steady skiing down on the lower pitch now. Getting a little bit low through those gates right before the flush, but snakes her feet through that final flush, keeping the momentum as she makes her way to the flats and Ella Bromi across with a good run into 10th position. A great job for the Seawolf. University of Alaska Anchorage with a couple in the top 10 right now as we look to our next racer from the University of New Hampshire, Zoe Michael. The junior from Sydney, Australia. Getting a little bit inside there, coming onto the top pitch. Does well to stay on her feet. And bounce a little bit low before that hairpin, but Zoe doesn't appear to be phased. A few small mistakes, but she continues to charge. Again, getting pushed a little bit low on some of those turns, the hips staying low. She's trying to keep maintain ski snow contact, but getting bucked a few times, Zoe Michael. But there's been no panic in her skiing as she reaches across the time, 43.75 into 17th position for Michael. Michelle Kirvin from the University of Utah, the senior out of Stockholm, Sweden. Looking to use her veteran savvy here to put down a good result for the University of Utah. Again, I wonder the strategy and the approach with the coaches for these athletes here tonight as the University of Utah carries a 56-point lead into these slalom races. Kirvin skiing well. It's solid. Sometimes it's hard to ski safe because that's not how you necessarily train. And to me, Kirvin's doing a nice job of skiing an aggressive mindset with a smart tactical approach, which is the best way to go as Kirvin charges to the line and she reaches across. The time will put her into 18th position. So a solid spot from which she can attack. There's not a whole lot of separation at the top as Elsie Halverson from Harvard University kicks onto the course. This should feel like home for Elsie. She's been waiting for this moment all season long. To qualify for this event was exceptional for the Harvard skier who hails from Denver, Colorado and grew up ski racing here at the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club. She went to school up here. So she knows the hill well. She loves the night slalom. She came back to compete at the Murphy Roberts Holiday Classic under the lights. And she's charging down on this lower section. Halverson knows how to ski this hill. Can the Harvard skier use it to her advantage and get a great result across the line? Halverson into 19th position. A good solid run for Elsie. Carmen Sophie Nielsen from the University of Alaska Anchorage now in the start. An opportunity is there for three skiers from the University of Alaska Anchorage into the top 10. Her two teammates have done well in top spots and Nielsen skiing very well up here at the top. Good clean skiing up there. We see the turn above the gate giving herself room to lay those skis over and carve them around through the turn. Nielsen now onto the lower pitch. A little bit slower tempo as those turns go back and forth. Now it's time to step on the gas before the flush. It gives her the speed for the flats. Nielsen has had a good run. As she makes her way to the finish, she'll cross. The time 43-12 moves her up into 13th position. That's three Seawolves inside the top 13. Olivia. All right, Olivia Holm, our next competitor from Dartmouth College. Oh, and Olivia getting stuck on the inside, having to hike back up to make that hairpin. 
Oh, man, I tell you what, it's been a tough go for home here at these NCAA championships. Oh, and down she goes on her side. Frustration on the face of the Dartmouth College racer. Oh, my heart goes out to her. Such a tough break for Olivia. Coming off the win in the GS at the Eastern Regional Championships there, Middlebury Ski Bowl. She had high hope for today's race. As we see, she comes into that gate, just gets... That ski just caught up underneath her, that left ski, as she was trying to release it. It just cut right underneath her. It's tough after the mistake up above where she had to make that hike. You kind of lose your focus and you try to get back into the rhythm, but for home, it just wasn't there tonight. Good to see her up on her feet. We got one more Shiro coming up in a little bit. Anna Soria starting bid number She'll ski down to the bottom on one ski. Don't try that at home, ladies and gentlemen, but these skiers have incredible skill. Felt that would be easier on her other leg to just go down on one ski. She makes her way to the bottom, no problem. A tough break for the Dartmouth College racer. Evelina Fredrickson from Westminster College, our next racer. She had a great day in the giant slalom two days ago, finishing in fourth place. The senior out of Stockholm, Sweden, was seventh in last year's NCAA championship slalom. So this is going to be a run to watch. And I talked about it before, the Westminster College skiers with that green light. No Nordic program. They can go for broke tonight here in the slalom. No reason to ski conservatively. And Fredrickson looking strong at the top. The way the skiers are tightly packed at the finish. I think the NCAA slalom champion title is wide open at the moment. And the snow is holding up well for the skiers. So an attacking run from the 27th position could put her in a spot where on that second run she could bring it home. Fredrickson skiing strong down here. She reaches to the line and she'll cross into 18th position. Good solid run for Fredrickson. And now St. Michael's College on course. This is Helene Christofferson, the junior from Rallingen, Norway. On to the top pitch. Good balance scheme for Christofferson. A big, big accomplishment when you can ski the upper steep dark skipping section and Christopher. She's through the saddle section now onto the lower pitch. Letting it go. Bright green shin guards and pole guards piercing the night sky here in Howison Hill. You can see her from downtown Steamboat Springs as Christofferson makes her way to the finish line and she'll cross. 44-51 into 24th position. Justine LaMontagne from Montana State now on course. Montaigne charging out of the top. Oh, a little bump there on that one turn. has got a few racers and definitely has got her a little bit sideways, but the veteran skier not phased by that problem up there. Tough rattly snow, no problem for the Quebec skier. She was sixth at the championships last year. An opportunity for her to bump up a few more spots. That was a little costly error, but the good news is that's the steepest part of the slope. So the momentum is gained again quickly as La Montaigne approaches the finish. The Bobcat, a few gates to go. She charges to the line and La Montaigne into 24th position. This is a run to watch. Hannah Soria from Colby College. 
She spent a lot of time training with the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club here, a fantastic slalom skier. She has been looking forward to this day for a long time. What a chance to come back to the slopes of Howelson Hill and a mistake in the hairpin. What an athletic move to stay in the course. Soria getting bucked around a little bit in there, but the attitude is full charge. So I think the aggressive attitude could overcome the mistakes on the upper section for Soria if she can ski clean down here on the lower part of the course. The crowd is making a lot of noise to bring home our girl from Steamboat, Hannah Soria, across the line with a 25th position result. And now it's Leif Moritz from the University of Denver. Pushing out of the gate. This is a run from the back of the pack where we could see a significant move in the University of Denver needs it. No problem through that bump on the road that's thrown a couple other skiers. Moritz, such a solid technician. This is good looking skiing for the University of Denver. Pioneer out of Vail, Colorado. Just a freshman, but a member of the Stiefel US ski team. She has got the speed and the skill to do well here tonight. Perhaps the freshmen don't feel the pressure in the same way as the upperclassmen. Moritz looking rock solid and smooth as she approaches the finish. Moritz across the line. The time 43.95 into 21st position. Megan Olson now from Colby College, our next competitor. A senior global studies student out of Bethesda, Maryland. What an opportunity for her. And a nice job up on the upper section. Getting a little bit back, though, on that top pitch. Horses steep in there. The cameras don't do it justice. Now onto the saddle section. A little bit of a short reprieve, and she gets a little bit low as the hill falls away to the left. She wasn't strong over that left ski. And she's kept herself on course. Olsen, middle of the lower pitch now as we see the crowd continue to build here at Howelson Hill. What a night for ski racing here at these NCAA championships as Olsen crosses the line into 30th position. Two racers left. And this is a big opportunity for Denise Dingsletter from the University of Colorado. Dingsletter in second place in the giant slalom two days ago. Pressure high for these University of Colorado Buffaloes. They've got points to make up against the University of Utah. Dingsletter though, the veteran, capable of doing it. Utah's got three in the finish, but they're not at the top of the standings right now. If Dingsletter can put something into that top 10, that would be huge news for the University of Colorado. It's a solid looking run for Dingsletter. We commented in the giant slalom how strong her skiing is. As Dee Dee makes her way to the line, she will cross. The time 44.01 puts her into 22nd position. Now our final racer here in the women's run, it's Alexandra Cassette from Middlebury College. Alexandra from Montreal, Quebec. Studying economics, she's a senior at Middlebury. Keeping those feet nice and close together. We look for independent feet, but a narrow stance in slalom cat can be advantageous if the skier can ski from foot to foot. And low out of that hairpin goes Cassette. I tell you what, the momentum looked great coming off the saddle. Cassette was having a really good run, but that was a major error. Cassette now into the flush near the finish. Charging her way to the line, Alexandra Cassette. Ah, um, disappointment on her face. She knows that mistake was costly. She skis into 31st position. And that wraps up our first run for the women. The men will be underway in just, just over 
Five minutes, five, ten minutes until the men's race, but the women's race, first run in the books. And it's Magdalena Lusak, no surprise, from the University of Colorado, up into the top of the standings after the first run. Could it be a sweep for her after Madison Hoffman completed that feat last year? Ansley Profit right behind, and we look at the top ten and we see less than nine-tenths of a second separating those top ten, which means anything can happen in the second run. Importantly, we, as we look for the team standings, we've got one skier from our top three teams, CU, DU, and Utah, in the top ten. So, so far, perhaps not huge movement in those team standings. Dartmouth College, with two skiers up in the top four, looking to make a move right now. The University of Alaska Anchorage as well with two skiers in the top 10. What a fantastic start to the night racing here at Howlson Hill. We'll be back underway with the men's slalom in just a few moments here at NCAA.com. All right, we've switched things over and we're close to being ready for the forerunners here for the men's first run here at Howlson Hill under the lights. The crowd has really shown up here tonight. Kids and adults alike gathered around lining the hill tight to the racing action down here at the finish. It's ex always exciting at Howelson Hill. The racers at the top of the slope look across the valley to the GS Hill that's all lit up from the races on Wednesday and then down across the river in town. A picture perfect night tonight. Temperatures in the 20s. The snow has passed and great conditions for racing as we get a look at the Simo Springs Winter Sports Club, Al Stevens Family Alpine venue under the lights. There, fantastic night skiing both at the big resort and here at Howison Hill and Steamboat. The skiers never stop here in this town. Such a great skiing heritage and culture. Here at Howison Hill, in fact, the oldest operating ski area in North America. Been skiing here since 1915. And Carl Howison first took to the slopes, built a ski jump. The other side, a great Nordic ski jumping heritage here in Steamboat. Alpine racing, snowboarding, freestyle skiing as well. 100 Winter Olympians have honed their skills here on this exact slope. Kids working on their sliding skills out there tonight. I think the training courses for the our collegiate races are probably done for the night as the kids have taken over the hill and said it's sledding time. We've got big tents down in the baseball field that's adjacent to the finish line. Alumni and big crowds gathered to celebrate the excitement of collegiate ski racing. And what makes the college ski racing experience so great is the team aspect. These athletes not only competing for themselves, but competing for their teams. And the race fans having teams to cheer for. Instead of just one individual athlete makes it a great time. As the men look over the course, preparing for their run. We look back at the team standings. University of Utah. Boy, have they been steady 
four years in a row taking the title. They've got the lead at the halfway point here in Steamboat Springs, but Colorado, Denver, still within reach. A good day today and then a good day tomorrow in the cross country. That lead by Utah is definitely not safe. They were solid in the first run for the women, but not extraordinary. Colorado and Denver with some top results. Lusak in the lead. Rask for DU into fifth. Nora Brand for DU in 12th. But I would say in the women's race there at the top, just looking at it so far, no real moves happening, but the women are tightly packed with just 10 skiers inside of less than, 10, uh, less than a second. Let's see if the men's race gets packed that closely here as well will make really exciting racing for the second runs later tonight. Our course crew putting some final touches on the men's course here. They'll run on the steeper skier's left-hand side. Then for the second run, we'll flip sides. And the women will run on the right, men will run on the left. A little bit different terrain, a little different flavor from these two sides we talked about on the women's course there in the saddle in the middle. A few flatter turns, kind of a reprieve before you hit your breath again for that final pitch. The men's side, there's no break. You come off the road and it's straight into the pitch and the pitch doesn't stop until you're near the finish. So the men will need to be on their toes and be skiing their best. So our course workers continue to work on the slope. We will take a break and come back when we're ready for forerunners here at Howlson Hill for the NCAA Slalom Championships. A beautiful shot of downtown Steamboat Springs from the top of the Howlson Hill Slope. We are underway with forerunners here for this men's first run. First chance to get a look at this men's course set. Some good quick turns on the road section up above. And now it's a straight shot down to the finish for these men. Quick tempo on this course, the steepest part of the hill, right about in there, just above. A little lower pitch now. No tricks evident in this course. It is quick pace right down the fall line. In courses like this, the early start often can be an advantage. A skier starting early with an aggressive approach and sometimes pull well clear of the field. They get the tempo just right. But as we see with this forerunner, when the tempo is a little bit off, then the skiers are hitting the edges heavy. And the time can go away quickly with the pressures of the team title on the line here for these NCAA championships. Anything can happen in the slalom. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens as we get underway for real. This is our final forerunner. Declan McCormick, our first racer out of the gate today. Pairing up top as our final forerunner, making sure that everything is good. The gates are in the ground well. Course workers are clear of the course. Our video camera guys are awake. Our timing is working well. Looks like a fun course to me. But really one of those courses, I would say it's full attack. You've got to be on your game. Declan McCormick is a guy who's not going to hesitate to attack. And I think wearing bib number one, he's wearing bib 36. Bib number one must have gotten lost somewhere in the shuffle, but he's running bib number one. And that's going to be a good opportunity for the senior from Toronto, Ontario. 
Racing for the Catamounts as he awaits the start command from our starter. We're underway for the men's slalom. Declan McCormick from the University of Vermont on course. The Catamounts need a big performance from McCormick today to claw their way back towards the top of these NCAA championship standings. McCormick looking strong on the upper section, tight to those gates. Good direct line, moving himself down the hill. That delay accelerating through it. And McCormick making easy work of this course so far. Now he approaches the crowd a little bit bigger, turns in there, but no problems whatsoever. McCormick, it's a drag race for McCormick, and he's across with a 37-31. He barely out of breath to run like that. Wow. Now his teammate, Magnus Berge Styron. Can these two guys put down some times that are hard to touch and catapult the Catamounts back near the top of the team standings? What a great opportunity going one, two. Styron looks a little bit later with his pressure than McCormick, but he's definitely going full gas. Styron looking strong. But to me, just heavier in the pressure than McCormick. A little bit out of sync down there. And into second position for Styron. Just about eight-tenths of a second back. Now it's Jeremy Lagier racing for Westminster College. The senior studying sport management getting a little bit low coming off the road. But quickly, the hill gets steeper, so that mistake won't cost him too much. But I tell you what, McCormick skied phenomenally, so Lagier is going to need to do something special down here. Looks a little less clean to me for Lagier, but he's skiing a direct line. He's keeping that turn above the gate. Tactically, it's good. Technically, could he clean it up just a little bit? It's solid. No mistakes for Lagier. As he crosses the line, he moves into second position. Just a couple tenths back. Lagier likes this hill. He's had success here before. He's got his name on the Murphy Roberts Holiday Classic Trophy. So you know that he can ski fast on this hill. Here's a guy that can ski fast. Isaac Hedstrom from the University of New Hampshire. I like his style. This nice, smooth, calm skiing. The upper body stays quiet. Never seems out of whack. Never loses his composure. Hedstrom. Looking solid on the upper section. Sometimes harder to see the speed for a skier like Hedstrom, but what he's doing with his feet is good. It's subtle, it's down the hill, and Hedstrom making his way towards the finish, and he'll cross into third position. Just eight tenths of a second back. Now the University of Utah, Mikkel Solbakken. This guy seems unstoppable and unflappable. I tell you what, he took the victory in the giant slalom two days ago. He finished fourth last year at the slalom, which is the top finish of skiers in this year's competition. The top three from last year all have moved on. So Solbakken, he is one to watch, and again for these Utes. Does Solbakken have the green light to go full bore at this, or has he been told, make sure you finish, ski smart tactically? Solbakken is rock solid anyway. He's going to be fast no matter what he does on the mountain, and he skis into third position after that first run. That was well done for the Ute, exactly what they need. And now Thomas Hoffman from the University of Denver the sophomore skier for the Pioneers. Looking for him to put down a strong run. The Pioneers have a streak of their own. They've won the last three championship team titles here at Steamboat Springs. Is today the day they make their move towards the top? Hoffman skiing well. It's a good looking run for Hoffman. Hitting the edges hard there though. And it's gonna be small mistakes like that that are gonna cost on a course that's as fast and as simple as this one across into third for Hoffman. Not a bad spot to be at the moment. And now for the University of Colorado, Philip Valquist from Oslo, Norway. 
the freshman right out of the gate looking to carry the load for these buffs tonight. A good looking top section for Volquist. Volquist a slalom stud. He was eighth in the giant slalom, a good result, but he's looking for more in tonight's slalom. This is good looking run. It looks like he's attacking aggressive. Volquist skiing well down here. McCormick has held the lead since the get-go, but Falquist takes it now. The CU Buffalo on top of the standings, moving ahead by 16 hundredths of a second. And now Simon Strand from St. Michael's College. He was sixth fastest in the giant slalom. Strand will have the green light. The senior from Hovik, Norway. He's a three-time All-American and a three-time All-Eastern skier. Boy, he would love to go out with a great result here in tonight's slalom. A little bit rounder line for Strand than we saw perhaps from our top skiers, but it's clean and good. Strand charging to the line, and he reaches across into fourth position goes Strand. Leon Nikic fired up at the top. The University of Alaska Anchorage Seawolf pushing his way on course. Nikic is not going to hold back on this run, I can assure you that. Good aggressive skiing off the road, the feet close together. As he dances over the breakover onto the main pitch now goes Nikic. The Austrian studying psychology, he's a senior. These are going to be his last laps for the Seawolves. Bittersweet moment for the seniors in today's competition. Getting a little bit wide there is Nikic, but otherwise it's been a fantastic run for the Seawolf. As he makes his way to the finish line, he reaches across and into ninth position goes Nikic. Dan Gillis up next for Dartmouth College. The sophomore out of East Burke, Vermont, studying economics. Always sending it, Gillis. Dartmouth women did a good job in the slalom first run. Can the men continue the move up the standings? Gillis looking solid down here. This course should be to his liking. He's a fearless skier. Gillis charging his way towards the bottom. A good looking run for Gillis as he makes his way to the line. And Gillis across with a 38-53 moves him into 10th position. Not a whole lot of separation, a course like this. Thought we might see one skier go out right in front with a big margin. I'm not sure that that can happen now. Such a great run by Volquist in the lead, but Jean-Luca Boom is a skier that could challenge that lead for sure. He was eighth in last year's NCAA Slalom Championships. Finished seventh in the GS from St. Moritz in Switzerland. Boom has had a good season on the RMISA circuit for the Bobcats. A little bit of heavy pressure for Boom, though, down here. He's definitely sending it. That was a nice section before the flush for Boom. As he makes his way to the line, Boom reaching across, and into ninth he goes. Now for the University of New Hampshire, we watch Hunter Brayton. Brayton, a grad student, working towards his MBA at the University of New Hampshire. He was 13th in the giant slalom. A veteran. Steen with some veteran savvy. Good, strong skier. No excess movement for Brayton. Just nice and smooth. Down the fall line he goes. Is the pressure a bit heavy? Perhaps. Getting a little bit late, but doing a nice job keeping on his feet through that flush as Brayton charges to the line and brings a gate with him, a souvenir across the finish line. Brayton's moved into seventh position. That was a good run just under a second back. Raphael Lassard now on course, our second skier from the University of Utah. The attitude looks good from Lassard up top. 
Aggressive stance and a smart line for Lassard through that upper section. Lassard, a sophomore studying finance. This is a good, solid run for Lassard. I see no major mistakes from Lassard, but he may have played it a bit safe as he skis into the 13th position. We talked about the short course. There's no place where you can't get after it. The skill so high at this event. Playing it safe can be a, di a difficult gamble here as Oscar Zimmer from Dartmouth College now makes his way. Zimmerman nice and solid. A little few heavy pressures down there, but Zimmerman now accelerating towards the finish. The Dartmouth skier crosses into 12th position. Just over a second back of our leader, Philip Valquist. Christian Sovic now on course. What a great day for him in the giant slalom finishing third. The freshman from Oslo, Norway. Really a great pickup for the Pioneers. They need something special from Sovic here in the slalom. Getting a little bit low and a few heavy pressures, but Sovic so smooth. Nice touch on the snow for Sovic. What a great crowd down here. You see him in the background cheering on the University of Denver skier and Sovic across Nine tenths of a second back puts him in seventh position. That was a good run for the DU Pioneer. Hayden Dahl now on course, hails from Plymouth, New Hampshire, the senior studying business administration. He's a two time national collegiate all academic team member. Finished fifth in the slalom at Middlebury for the Eastern Regional Championships. So he's a guy to watch in the slalom. University of New Hampshire qualifying a full team of men here for these championships. Getting a little bit late is Dahl, and that cost the skiers by the heavy edge pressure at the end of the turn for Dahl as he reaches for the line across into 16th position for Dahl. Getting fired up at the top, a little pound to the chest, Roman Frost. A tough break for Frost in the giant slalom as they had a little bit of a suit issue for Frost. He was disqualified after the first run. But things squared away here now, showing the Westminster College colors and skiing a strong upper section is Frost. Halfway through now. Good solid skiing for the German. He was a national junior champion in slalom and GS at Germany. Member of the German national team. Frost for Westminster College to the finish. And across into 17th position. Plymouth State. Now on course, Max Hausman. The competitor, our lone alpine skier from Plymouth State. So Hausman in the fortunate position to have a full gas green light. All systems go from his coaches and oh, a tough break for Hausman and he's off course, just getting a little bit behind the course. Skis getting thrown off his skis a little bit and out goes Hausman. As he contemplates what happened up there. We go back to the start and Jan Rohner, the Austrian racing for the University of Alaska Anchorage. He's a junior at Alaska Anchorage studying finance. Jan's favorite skier, Bodie Miller. Wonder how many Austrians would answer that question, Bodie Miller. 
The Austrians generally known as such tacticians. Bodie Miller with such a flamboyant and original style of skiing. Rohner using a little bit of both. He's a technician, but really hurling himself down the hill as Rohner makes his way to the finish line and across into 16th position for the Seawolf. Harrison Deganji now on course from Colby College, hailing from Stratton, Vermont, and all right out of the start. Oh my goodness. What a tough break for Deganji. The very first gate. That is just a tough break. The hopes were so high for Deganji. But it happens. You see everything in a slalom course. It's what makes it so exciting. But Deganji now after that hike, the lactic acid building, a longer run for him. And he wanted to put it through the finish here in front of the crowd. Such an opportunity and such a great crowd out here tonight, Deganji. He'll be disappointed with that result. He can't believe it. Blake Chablis now on course from Westminster College from Villers, Switzerland. He's a senior studying economics. Boy, those feet getting so close together and so close to the gate. Oh, and Lloyd getting twisted up there and he straddles that gate. He knew it. He's going to go back up there. These racers, this is a little something different for them. Throughout the university carnival schedule, the races were sanctioned by FIS. And a new rule in FIS does not allow the skiers to climb back up to make a gate if they missed it. But the championships are not FIS sanctioned. There are collegiate rules that allow for them to hike, to finish, which can be important for points here in the standings. But Loic, two racers in a row now with some big time problems. A tough run there for Loic. Well, now it's Charlie Lang's turn. Charlie from Norwich, Vermont, racing for Middlebury College. He's a senior studying political science and he's getting after it up here on the top road. Charlie Lang dropping over onto the pitch. Lang is going for it here tonight. Good hustle from Lang through that delay that accelerates the skiers into this lower pitch. Crisp turns there for Lang as he charges his way to the finish. Quick feet across the flats and he crosses into 17th position. Moving up a few spots for the Middlebury skier. Ryder Sarchette tapping the poles over the wand as he gets his turn onto the course. The freshman from Sun Valley, Idaho, racing for the University of Colorado his first time in these NCAA championships. He's a world junior champion, ladies and gentlemen, in the giant slalom, newly crowned with that title about a month ago in France. Looking for a strong day today. This is good scheme for Sarchette. Solid. Is it fast? This course is the type of course where you can feel great in the finish, but slow in the time. Sarchette crossing with the 15th fastest run. That'll move him up and put him in good position for that second run to continue to move up through the field. And now Max Martin from Dartmouth College on course. Max from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, the senior studying economics. He's an academic all Ivy skier from the 22-23 season. Idolizes former Dartmouth racer Tange Neff, who's having himself a fine career on the World Cup circuit for Switzerland. Martin skiing well himself down here. Good looking skiing for the big green. As he makes his way towards the finish line, Martin will cross. 38 
90 puts him into 16th position. Now from the University of Nevada, Reno, it's Ivor Nace from Oslo, Norway. Nace really running a direct line up there. Full attack. There's no respect for this course from Nace. You see hardly any distance above the gate for his turns. He's really putting the hammer down. I think that approach on this course can work and be fast. The snow's holding up well. The offset is not too much, but it catches up with Nays there. Sometimes you can play with fire and get away with it, but not that time for Nays. Not a bad time despite the short hike, but now it's Bodie time. Bodie Flanagan from Boston College. The Steamboat Springs local is on course. The lone member of the Boston College ski team to make these NCAA championships in the hometown boy. Loves his slalom skiing on this slalom hill at Howelson Hill. Bodie Flanagan charging hard down here for the home crowd. The loudest applause I've heard on this hill all night is Bodie Flanagan making his way to the bottom. He's charging, there have been errors. That was an incredible recovery to stay on the course as Bodie Flanagan makes his way across the line and into 22nd position. And keep the crowd going. Trey Seymour now another Steamboat Springs local racing here on his home hill at these NCAA championships. This is Trey Seymour. His older brother Jet, the 2019 NCAA slalom champion. Ken Trey following his brother's footsteps. Giant slalom, the better event for Trey. But he's putting down a good run here tonight on the Howelson Hill slope. He knows it so well. He should be motivated by the success of his brother. The Pioneers are looking for a good result from Seymour, and he's putting down a good run for him, making him proud, breaking that gate off. Thank goodness it didn't go right in front of his track. Seymour reaching to the line and across, and Seymour moving into the 23rd position. Bradshaw Underhill, our next racer on course from Middlebury College. He's a junior studying physics out of Newberry, New Hampshire. Good solid skiing for Underhill. He had a good race going in that giant slalom before things broke down on the second run for him. But this is a good performance here tonight on the first run. Oh, a little bobble there and he did a great job to stay in. It didn't look like it cost him any momentum. Underhill charging to the line, and he's going to cross into 15th position. A great run indeed, nearly cutting that start position in half. And now from the University of Colorado, here comes Etienne Mazillier, the freshman. A little bobble there on the fourth gate. But Mazillier keeping the momentum going down the hill. Little odd pull plant in there, but again, Mazillier not phased. Is Mazelier feeling the pressure here tonight? The Buffaloes need a good performance from all their skiers to move up on Utah. Mazelier nice and direct through that hairpin. Good speed through this section. He's not doing too much. He's keeping the momentum. Mazelier moving to the finish and across. And Mazelier skiing into 15th position. That's a solid performance from which you can continue to move forward. And now on course, here comes Kyle Alexander from the University of Vermont. Alexander, what a story he is. Scored his first World Cup point this season at Garmisch, Germany in the Super G, a member of the Canadian national team. Slalom, not so much his specialty, but he's a college racer now. And he's been working on those slalom skills. And it looks like strong skiing for Alexander here on his first run at house and getting a little bit back seat. Impressive that on those short skis, he was able to maintain his balance. Alexander using all of his athleticism here as he reaches across the line and moves into 15th position. That's a great result for the Catamount. Now up top, it's Syndrome Michael Bust 
from the University of Utah. What a performance for him on Wednesday, finishing in second, making it 1-2 for the Utes. Can he put down a fast result here in the slalom? His teammate Solbakken in sixth right now. Utah would love to see another in the top 10. Michael Bust getting a little bit low, but the thing I like about his ski, not over pressuring until those few turns right in there. Getting too low coming out of that delay. But now he's got it back on track. Michael Bust making his way to the line. He'll cross. And that'll move him into 24th position. Nolan Sweeney up next from Colby College. Nolan hailing from Littleton, New Hampshire. He's a freshman at Colby College. Another skier who idolizes Bodie Miller. We look at Nolan and we see those smart feet like Bodie had. From the feet down, Bodie Miller was amazing from the feet up. You never know what you were going to get. Nolan Sweeney doing a nice job down here on the lower section. Really putting the hammer down is Sweeney for Colby College. As he makes his way across the line, Sweeney into 26th position. Isaac Starr set our next racer from Montana State. The Norwegian, a junior at Montana State studying economics. He says his favorite skier is his teammate, jean Luca Boom. Star Set and Boom have been a great tandem for the Bobcats. Star Set skiing a good solid run up there, a little bit lower in his line than some of the other skiers that we've seen. But this is a pretty simple course. I think the approach, he can get away with it. Starset making his way towards the line and across for Starset into 29th. And now there's one racer left. It's Gray Flanagan racing for St. Michael's College out of Westburg, Vermont. The sophomore studying civil engineering. Getting a little bit late down there. He's had himself a good season for St. Michael's College. The slalom, though, a little backseat in there. He's fighting it a bit. Ray Flanagan, can he keep it on track here? The pressure's a little bit low and late. Flanagan in the back seat, making another fine recovery. Those quads have got to be burning. They've been working hard to keep him upright as Gray Flanagan crosses the line, and he gets a finish into 30th position. And that wraps up our first runs here with Philip Valquist holding the top position, 16 hundredths of a second over Declan McCormick from the University of Vermont, Jeremy Lagier just behind that. And again, the story, a tightly packed race, just over a second separating our top 10 as we look at that leaderboard. And we think about the University of Utah with the strong lead after two days of competition. The University of Colorado certainly in good shape with Valquist up top. The Utes led by Solbach. And we see two pioneers in the top 10. That's a strong sign for DU as they look to climb back up the leaderboard. But an impressive first run here from the men. What a perfect night for racing here at these NCAA championships. The pressure builds as we get to the second run, though, which is scheduled to start at 9 o'clock local time, 11 o'clock Eastern here at Howelson Hill. As we look at some of the highlights from that first run, Isaac Hedstrom with a solid result, finishing in ninth. The skein was fast and direct down the hill. Magnus Berge Styron had a solid run. Dan Gillis from Dartmouth College always getting after it. There's no doubt he enjoyed his run on this course, finishing in 14th position. 
So a fine night of racing here at these NCAA championships. The big crowd is out. If you're if you're anywhere close to Steamboat Springs, make your way on down. But if not, make sure you stay tuned here at NCAA.com for the second run starting at 11 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock local. As the smoke clears the air over Howelson Hill, we get ready for the real fireworks show, which is going to happen here on the slalom course for the Women's NCAA Championship Slalom. The crowd regathering as the new courses are set for run number two, the women and men switching sides, and the pressure is on for the final Alpine race run of this NCAA season. The first run yielded a little bit of surprise and intrigue. I think I would say that the highlight for that first run, what stood out for me is the consistent steady scheme from the University of Utah. Holding the lead after coming into today by 56 points, the Ute women put down a 6th, an 11th, and a 19th place performance, which isn't dazzling, but is rock solid. And when compared to the competitors closest, Colorado and Denver, Utah is sitting in good position here coming in today. Now CU's got the top spot with Magdalena Lusak, but her teammates following behind in 22nd and 29th have some work to do on this second run. The University of Denver just about dead even with Utah in terms of points at the end of the first run if standings were to move forward. The University of Vermont trying to get back in the hunt. <clears throat> but they are behind the University of Utah in, in danger of losing even more points in the overall standings. So... We'll see what happens on this second run. The University of Utah has been so impressive. They seem impervious to pressure and smart with their approach as we look at our forerunner here on the second run. And the forerunner having some trouble. It'll be interesting to see if we indeed have a little bit more trickiness. The women switching over to the side that the men ran first run. And indeed down here we see much more swing in the course back and forth across the hill. This side of the hill, as I talked about with the men, there's less terrain change. It just goes straight down the mountain. So much steeper terrain on this side of the hill. So it looks like a little bit more technically challenging course. It's two racers in a row that have had problems in that hairpin just after the delay. So that will be something to watch. So a more difficult course that it looks like thrown in with the challenge in the pressure of competing in the final race run of these NCAA championships. Kind of running down the standings, things are pretty much where we started the day on the women's side. But the second run could really shake things up. Less than a second separate our top 10 racers. So an athlete that makes a big move here in the second run has got a chance to really jump up through the ranks. And you see on the right-hand column there, the team points. There's a premium for finishing in the top three. And then an additional premium for finishing in the top eight when you count down those points. So really important for the racers to make some moves. We could see some skiers make a move back. We're sure to see some skiers moving forward. And for those skiers that do move forward here on the second run, in true steamboat style, we're right next to the rodeo arena here at Howelson Hill. And that's a little rodeo right there for our forerunner. We've got the leader's saddle down there in the finish where the top skier will sit until another skier can come down and knock him off the saddle. So that'll be fun back there. We'll be showing you the leader's saddle. 
down there at the finish is our first racer from the University of Vermont gets ready to go up top. This is Justine Clement having some trouble in the first run. She did a really fine job to get back up there as you see the leader's saddle where she's going to hope that she can go take a seat for a while and bump up some places. She's currently in 33rd place, so no points for 33rd. She's got to move up through the field to get some points for the Catamounts who are in desperate need of some team points to move up from their current sixth place standing in the team competition. So come on, getting ready to go up top. I expect a fast run from Clement. She, again, it was a major mistake in that first run for her. She had to kind of circle around a gate to get back in the mix. Impressive that she is just three seconds out, three and a half seconds out for this run. So a run, a fast run that she's capable of could move her up several spots. She says, no paperwork for me right now. I got some ski racing to do. Good to see her good and loose. Happy up there in the start. She looks down over town. It's a beautiful sight to see up here. Howelson Hill under the lights. The hill just across the river from downtown Steamboat Springs. And the whole town seems to be out tonight, making some noise. Extra loud for our four hometown competitors that grew up here at the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club. But great cheers for all the competitors and the team supporters that are out here. That's what makes college racing so spectacular. The Palma ride back up to the top. Such a special place here. The athletes riding up the Palma, they can check out what's happening on the hill as they go down, always on their feet here at Howelson. A quiet, solitary ride up the Palma. A chance to think. Think about your run, think about your plan. That upper road up there, the hill has been iced on Monday evening. The coaches came out with the big fire hoses, opened up the hydrants from snowmaking and poured water on this hill after the cat opened it up. Try to get some density to the snow. It snowed so much here in Steamboat. And now we're seeing some conditions up top that are really firm and icy in some places. So of course, workers work on the surface right there on the road section. This course so technically challenging from right out of the gate. This section right up here about the fourth or fifth gate that the horse crew is working on. I remember when Carl Howison used to say that. They must not like something about the snow surface right there at the gate. Our forerunners had some trouble on it. So making a little adjustment so the racers can run inside of that snow spot. Since there are no racers have gone down yet, just four runners, they can, of course, jury can make that decision to move the gate to have a better race here for the athletes. So it looks like they've made that decision, cleaning up some snow. Justine Clement watching what's going on from the start up there. She can see it. They're just below her. So she'll know what's going on, be able to adapt her plan for that. Clamana Sr., this will be her final run for the University of Vermont Catamounts. We have several seniors tonight who are hoping to go out in style. She's a first team all East skier for the University of Vermont. Uh, Looks like she's getting those poles locked in. Must be about ready to go. A nod of the head for Clement. She's ready to go. A smile toward her coach and her teammates as they cheer her on at the start. Getting pumped up. Clement looking loose and relaxed. 
She's got her eye on that leader saddle at the bottom. There's one thing for certain, we're gonna see Justine give it her all on this run. The swan song run for Justine Clement, the senior for the University of Vermont. She's on course. Through that gate that they were working on, no problem. It looks like that was a good call. Now technical turns, this is a steeper side of the hill than the first run for the women. Clement through that delay in there, doing a nice job where the forerunners had difficulty. Lamont skiing well through here. She sets the intermediate time pace at 22.90 for the second run. We've got an intermediate time to keep us posted how the athletes are doing. This is a good looking run on the clean course for the University of Vermont skier. She reaches across the line and sets the pace. And onto the leader's saddle goes Clement. That was a fine looking run and a skier of Clement's caliber. There's a chance that could stand as the fastest run of the race throughout the entire second run. Her disadvantage from the first run though, the win will not be in touch for her, but that was a great run from Clement. As we watch Megan Olson now from Colby College on course. Olsen again looking to make a move up, try to get in the points for Colby College. As we see Olsen through the intermediate, she's 1.4 seconds back of Clement at the intermediate time. Just a little bit behind the course is Olsen. Nice shape turns there through that section. Now she accelerates across the flat, the Colby skier across the line into second position. For Olsen, back to the top we go. And on course, Alexandra Cassette from Middlebury College. Cassette nice on that upper section. A little bit of heavy pressure at the top of the second pitch. That can be a smart tactic to control the speed in that really steep section. She's through the delay well and managing through that quick hairpin right after the flush. A little bobble there. I think we're going to see a lot of action here on this second run in the intermediate for Cassette. Our fastest intermediate by just two hundredths of a second. So Cassette carrying the lead. As she approaches the finish, are we going to have a new leader? Cassette driving to the line, and she moves in to the second position, just two tenths of a second behind Clement. Now on course, this is Cassie Liebline from the University of New Hampshire. Dancing from turn to turn is Liebline. The thing I love about watching her ski is the action. You can always see her will to get to the finish fast. Always charging. She's getting a little bit behind the course. They're losing her outside ski just a touch, but that was a nice section. On to the lower pitch now for Liebline through the intermediate. She was about eight tenths of a second off on this run, which means she's even with our leaders in the finish on the combined time. That mistake will cost Liebline, the University of New Hampshire racer driving to the line and Liebline across into third place. All right, Clement enjoying her time in the saddle. She's guaranteed points for her catamounts as Julia Toivonen from the University of Colorado takes to the course. Toivonen's got some work to do in 29th after the first run. The Buffs need some points if they're looking to reel in the University of Utah. Ask for Toivonen is to pull back some ranks. Toivonen, as she approaches the lower section now, looking strong. It's been a good run from Toivonen. We did not get an intermediate time, so we're in the dark on how she's doing. Clement in the leader saddle. Toivonen looking to take the top spot, and she does. Julia Toivonen into the lead by one tenth of a second. So the University of Colorado takes a seat on the saddle. And now Helene Christofferson on course. Christofferson racing for St. Michael's College. 
The skier's doing a nice job on the course. I was a little concerned after the forerunners had their problems, but no problem for these ladies that are carrying all the pressure here of the second run. At the NCAA Championships, Christofferson through the intermediate third fastest. She's about a half second off the pace, but maintains her lead overall. But it's going to be tight down here towards the finish as the St. Michael's College skier charges to the line. Christofferson across into second position. Just nine hundredths of a second from that leader's saddle is Christofferson. We've got some close, exciting racing here on the hill as Hannah Soria now takes to the course. Hannah for Colby College. We talked about it in the first run. She knows this hill well, having trained with the Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club for many years in her development as a junior racer. Oh, a little bit sideways there, almost down on her side, but Soria stays on her feet. The hill so steep in that section that a mistake is not too costly. The momentum can be regained quickly, but she's seven tenths out on this run through the intermediate. She's got some work to do down here on the lower section, but Soria knows the hill well, and she's capable of making a move on this lower section. Soria is charging hard to the line, and she moves into first position, taking the lead from Toivonen by two tenths of a second. What a treat for the former Winter Sports Club racer to sit on that leader's saddle. It's our next racer now on course, Justine Lomontaine from Montana State now on course, just really letting those skis run down the hill. Lamontaine, such a nice touch on the snow, makes it look effortless down here. Lamontaine, good skiing through the delay. We look to the intermediate time for La Montaigne. It's a good looking run for her. Skiing well. Missing that intermediate time, but I can tell from the skiing, it looks fast to me. La Montaigne seems to be in her element here. She's got the rhythm, love skiing in front of the night crowd, and she crosses La Montaigne from Montana State. Has the lead by seven tenths of a second. What a great run for the Bobcat. Now our lone bait skier, Juliet Hoder. Let's see if Bates College can get onto that leader's saddle. Hoder, good smooth skiing coming off the road. Now onto the steep pitch. Easing into it is Hoder. Through that delay now, will she start to let the skis run? Through that hairpin safely. That's gonna be a tricky section. Hoder seems to have it in form down here. As she approaches the middle part of the final pitch. Through that quick flush goes Hoder. The crowd at the bottom cheering her on. Juliet Hoder driving to the line. The Bates College skier will cross at these NCAA championships. Moving into sixth position for Hoder. As La Montaigne gets comfortable on that leader's saddle. It's Hannah Sethering from Westminster College. Sethering. Expect full charge from this run, Sethering. Skiing so aggressively in that first run. Now she's got a little better course, posi uh, course condition. Getting a little bit low as she comes onto this second pitch, or this first pitch down here. But Sethering's got it back on track, safely through that hairpin. She really set that up. Wanted to make sure she got through that technical section right in the middle of the course. A little bit off the pace there at the intermediate for Sethering. She's really got to let it run down here at the lower section. This looks like good skiing from Sethering, but maybe not quite as crisp as the first run as the Westminster College racer drives to the line and across. Sethering into eighth position. Now it's Harvard's turn. Elsie Halverson pushing out of the start gate. Elsie went to high school here in Steamboat Springs, did her junior development with the Winter Sports Club, loves Howelson Hill, was looking forward to this night slalom at the NCAA Championships. It motivated her through the season to ski well and qualify for these races. And now she gets a chance to show off in front of the hometown crowd 
cheering her on at Howelson Hill under the lights. Halverson skiing a good run through the flush. Halverson smooth, a little bit wide on that red gate there, but she's always so cool, calm, and collected. Maintains her momentum as Halverson approaches the finish line. Is it going to be enough to take down La Montaigne? No, into third she goes. A solid run for Halverson, but not enough to sit in that leader chair as La Montaigne continues to hold a large margin of victory at the moment. But many skiers left to go, starting with Denise Dingsletter from the University of Colorado. Didi looking to make a move up important for the Buffaloes to score every precious point they can tonight. A little bobble at the top of the pitch for Dingsletter. But she's back up to speed quickly. Strong through the hairpin there. And now Dingsletter can really charge towards the finish. Dingsletter through the intermediate. About six tenths of a second off. She's really got to let it go down here. You see the turn up above the gate. Nice turn shape there. Is she letting the skis run enough, though? Those were good tactics. But as she let it come down the fall line, it's fourth fastest in that run, second overall for Ding's letter. So La Montaigne continuing to hold the top spot. As the University of Denver takes their turn. It's Lee Moritz. Denver also desperate for points here tonight. We don't want the pressure too big on the Nordic teams tomorrow. Little bit backseat is Moritz, but she's a veteran, a member of the Stiefel U.S. ski team from Vail, Colorado. She knows this snow and this hill well. Moritz looking solid up there. A few small mistakes, but she keeps the momentum moving down the hill. Another little bobble there and in the flush. Some trouble, but she continues down the hill. Leave Moritz approaching the finish line. It's been a good looking run for the DU skier and Moritz crossing into first position by five hundredths of a second. Moritz takes her spot on the leader's saddle and the University of Utah now on course. Michelle Curvin sitting in 19th after the first run doing such a fine job was Curvin and putting down a solid run moving up a little bit through the field. Finishes at a premium for Utah, based on the standing so far and the efforts from CU and DU and the others. I think for Curvin, just maintaining position, maybe moving up a few spots, is all the work she needs to do tonight. Sometimes you've just got to play your role with the team, and Curvin doing a great job here for the Utes. As she makes her way onto the lower section, Curvin has put together a good run. Now she puts the charge. She knows she's close to the finish line, and she reaches across into second place. That's well done from Curvin. She sees Moritz on that leader's saddle, but Curvin's done her job. It's a solid result for the Ute. Zoe Michael now on course from the University of New Hampshire. Good smooth ski down. They're getting a little bit low, and inside goes Michael. The hill so steep there, if you get inside of your skis, those skis will go out from underneath you, and there's no chance to recover. So a quick hike for Michael, and she's back on course. But that's going to push her out of the top 30 for sure. But she wants to get that finished in front of the big crowd assembled here at the bottom. Michael showing off here on the lower section. Oh, and another mistake for Michael. Compounding errors. The junior from Sydney, Australia, doing well to cross the line, but she was hoping for better here under the lights at Howelson Hill. Now it's Evelina Fredrickson's turn from Westminster College. Fredrickson with that great result in the giant slalom on Wednesday, finishing in fourth. Oh, in trouble for Fredrickson up there. And down she goes in the hill so steep. Before she knew it, she was three gates past. That problem area and skiing off course. Our first skier with letters, not numbers. Fredrickson is a DNF, did not finish. In the early exit for her. Her teammate now, Carlota Marcora 
on course, the Italian. He's really charging in that first run, had a few mistakes. Cost her a bit of time, but she's giving it her all on this second run. This is full charge from Marcora, but trouble in that hairpin. That was where the forerunners had trouble, and she sees her teammate and says, oh no. Back-to-back -back DNFs for Westminster College. All right, up next, now on course, it's Christiane Beckestad from Montana State. The pressure building as we get closer to the top here, but all of these athletes in touch of our leader, Magdalena Lusak. Beckestad just over a second back from in that first run. And the Bobcat now onto the lower part of the course. Her intermediate up top, just a few tenths behind. If she can keep this pace, it may be enough for her to unseat our current leader, Moritz, at the bottom. Beckestad looking solid. This is going to be close as Beckestad crosses the line. And she moves into first position. Bekestad taking this top spot by a half second. Now from the University of Vermont, this is Hannah Larson Nathorst. Good strong skiing up top, but getting low there on the first gate on the low, on the first pitch. Just stuck on her left ski. But she's got it back on track now. The good thing about a mistake in that section, it's right at the top of the pitch. Momentum comes back quickly but that was a pretty significant error for Nathorst. And indeed at the intermediate, she's about seven tenths back and then a straddle in the flush. And all of a sudden, Howelson rears its ugly head. The challenges of slalom day at the NCAA championships. Fortunately, that might be the dagger in the Catamount's hopes for a title here in Steamboat. Now on course, Caitlin Finn from Middlebury College. Caitlin nice and solid with her run up on the upper section through that hairpin that threw off the Westminster College racers. This is good rhythm for Finn. And a second off at the intermediate time though, perhaps skiing a little bit safe is Finn. You see the good turn shape up there, but the skis aren't tracking down the fall line like we saw from Bekestad a few runs before. And Finn crossing the line moves into third position overall. That leaves Carmen Sophie Nielsen, our next racer from the University of Alaska Anchorage. We're down to our top 13 from the first run. He is seven seconds into the court. Nielsen, nice skiing on the road up there. Solid over her skis. I like the balanced stance. Nielsen looks in control up here. Seawolf having a good run. All three Seawolves in the top 13 in that first run. And Nielsen looks to me like she's continuing the fast trend. Oh no, trouble for Nielsen coming into the flush. No problem here, some big turns. Nilsson now onto the lower section, a little bit behind, but she's letting those skis run. That was a big mistake up there for Nilsson, but she was fast elsewhere into second place, just nine hundredths back of Bekestad. An impressive result considering the magnitude of her mistakes, but now it's the University of Denver, Nora Brand. 12th fastest in that first run, but Nora, she's got her name on the Murphy Roberts Holiday Classic Trophy here in the Howelson Hill Lodge, which means she knows how to ski fast on this hill. She's got a fist win here, and she's looking to put down another fast run. Brand carrying the hopes and expectations for the University of Denver program. It's a good intermediate time for Brand. If she keeps this pace, the top spot is hers at the moment. Nora Brand, good clean skiing down here on the lower section. Brand charging towards the line and she'll cross. And Brand into the lead by three tenths of a second. The University of Denver has a seat on the leader's saddle. Now Madison Hoffman on course. She skied a veteran and smart first run. 
11th place. She's less than a second back. It looks to me like she's turned on, turned up the gears a little bit here on the second run. Getting inside on that gate, but such fine feel for balance. She somehow stays on her feet, quick through that hairpin. Hoffman putting down a great run up top as we look to the intermediate. She is right in touch, neck and neck, with Nora Brand, who just came down before. Brand was fantastic down here. These are two veterans running back to back. The race within the race. Madison Hoffman from the University of Utah approaching the finish, and she crosses the line, and she moves into the lead. Hoffman into the top spot by just over three-tenths of a second. Madison Hoffman, these University of Utah Utes, are unbelievable. So rock solid nerves of steel as Ella Bromi now from the University of Alaska Anchorage. We're into the top 10. Bromi, the Austrian, getting a little bit low there. That run from Hoffman was spectacular. Let's see how it holds up here as the get competitors continue to come down. Bromi, about three tenths of a second back. She's got to make up some time now on the lower section. The women so tightly packed. There's no margin for error. Bromi skiing very well, but is it going to be enough to take that leader's saddle? Bromi reaching across the line and into third position for the Seawolf. Tilda Candell now on course from the University of New Hampshire. Candell in ninth position after the first run, just eight tenths of a second back of our first run leader, Magdalena Lusak. Candell keeping the skis in the fall line is Candell. Now she shapes those turns through the hairpin. That was smart tactics, and now it's time to go for Candell. A little bit off in the intermediate, and now trouble before the flush. That was athleticism just to make it through the flush. I thought for sure that she was off course, but somehow she stays in. A big mistake just the same, though, for Candell. She's really going to have to charge down here, but that's going to bump her back some spots. Candell crossing. She moves into 11th position. She knows that was a difficult mistake. Now our top skier from the first run from the University of Vermont, Sydney Timmerman. She was eighth fastest in the first run. Timmerman really needs to go for broke here. It's win or bust for the Catamounts at this point. Timmerman skiing well up top. That high line to set up the hairpin. The word's gotten up to those skiers, but that's a tricky section. Timmerman threw it well, but she's off the pace. A little hard on the edges, perhaps up there for Timmerman. We see a little snow thrown sideways. Timmerman going to try to find the speed down here, but getting bumped in that rut. Timmerman goes low. Timmerman skates to the line. She crosses and into sixth position. For the Vermont skier, it's Madison Hoffman. Enjoys her time on that saddle. Mika and Reha now from Middlebury College pushing on course. We're down to our top seven. Working off the tails of the skis up at the top section is Reha using that double pole plant to recenter in between turns. Reha getting pushed a little bit low. This side of the course much steeper than the first run. But Reha hanging it in there. She's just trying to let those skis run down the hill. About a half second off the pace at the intermediate, though. Riha's going to need to really put her foot on the gas down on the slower section to bump Hoffman off the leader's saddle. Riha charging hard down here on the lower section. It's not enough into fourth position for the Middlebury skier. Now at the top, Kaya Norby. She should feel some comfort knowing that her teammate is in the finish, in the lead. The University of Utah having the day they needed so far here in this slalom to maintain their lead. Norby, the veteran. Staying solidly on the upper section. 
I am so impressed by the performance of these Utah skiers here in Steamboat. Executing the plan perfectly, Kai and Norby, 10 gates from the finish. The Utah Utes putting all three skiers into the points today. Norby moving back to 12th. Perhaps that leaves the door open just a touch, but she's gotten the finish and earned some points for her school as Sarah Rask now takes to the course. Rask for the University of Denver. She's a skier that's got the skill to move into that leader saddle down there. Madison Hoffman, so solid. I really love how she put the pedal down on the second run after a smart first run. But Rask, veteran savvy, could make that move, but she's off the pace at the intermediate. Rask perhaps feeling the pressure a little bit down here. She tries to get the acceleration through the final few gates before the flats. Rask, it's a good effort down here to the line for the Pioneer but not enough as she moves into third position. So now we're down to four racers left. Madison Hoffman still sitting on that leader's saddle. Zoe Zimmerman from Dartmouth College now taking her turn. What an opportunity for Zimmerman. These Dartmouth skiers going for broke. She and teammate Ali Resnick next out of the start have a chance to make the headlines here for Dartmouth College. Zoe Zimmerman getting a little bit low through that section. She's got to maintain the momentum now through the flush. So she has the speed across the flats and to the finish. Strong skiing from Zimmerman. Zimmerman charging to the line. And it's going to be eighth position for the Dartmouth College skier. Now three to go, Allie Resnick studying the course from the top. Puts her poles over the wand. And it's time to go, Allie Resnick. From Vail, Colorado, a good looking start for Resnick. She's got attack on her mind. This is strong skiing. She's got two jobs right now. Can she unseat our current leader, Madison Hoffman, and put down a time that's going to concern our first-run leader, Magdalena Lusak? It's good up top for Resnick. The Dartmouth College racer charging hard. The intermediate time, though, showing she's a bit off pace again. She's going to need a solid lower section down here to beat Hoffman. Resnick from Dartmouth College. It's good skiing down here. But as she lost the time up above, Resnick reaching across the line and into ninth position she goes. As Hoffman gets some hugs down there, she's guaranteed a top three. She's been top three in all four of the last NCAA championship races. What an accomplishment. Here comes Ansley Prophet now from the University of Alaska Anchorage. Prophet in that great position. She doesn't carry the pressure of the leader. She's just five hundredths of a second off, though, from that first run. She has nine tenths to play with ahead of Hoffman from that first run, but she's getting a little bit late up there on that upper section and now twisted as she passes the intermediate timer profit. A little wide on some gates. The mistakes are starting to add up for profit. Can she keep it going twisted again there for profit? And I'm afraid that the mistakes are just magnifying for profit as she makes her way to the line and she knows it. Ah, oh, slalom so tough. Hoffman, no worse than second. As Magdalena Lusak from the University of Colorado. She took the giant slalom title two days ago. This moment is not too big for her. The lead, 95 hundredths of a second from the first run that she's playing with. But she knows the win is so important for her University of Colorado team. Lusak has been on the World Cup top 30 this season. Some of the top results from any skier in the circuit today. But in fact, it's Hoffman who also scored a top 30 at Levy this season. So we've got a World Cup 
skier versus World Cup skier here at these NCAA championships. Lusak versus Hoffman. Lusak approaching the finish and Lusak reaching across. And it's enough to take the win by 13 hundredths of a second. The University of Colorado skier has made it two for two. And there are two double champions right there, ladies and gentlemen. Lusak and Hoffman. Hoffman taking the double win last year. Lusak taking the double win this year. What an impressive finish and the celebration ensuing in the finish line for the University of Colorado Buffaloes. Boy, did that need, did they need that clutch performance from Lusak. And what an impressive race. Wow. Just wow is the Colorado flags waving in the air. That is a fine performance. For Magdalena Lusak, congratulations. A double champion here at these NCAA championships. Madison Hoffman for the second time, day in a row here, finishing in second place. Nora Brand in third. Sarah Rask hanging on to fourth, tied with Ella Bromi from the University of Alaska, Anchorage. So again, the result, these results unofficial at the moment as the jury looks through all the runs to make sure all the runs were clean. But either way, we've got some exciting racing in the books from the first run here. We're going to switch courses over and move to the men in just about five minutes. We'll see you back here in just a few. Well, I'm still catching my breath after that women's race under the lights. It's always exciting here, but so impressed by the gutty skiing from Magdalena Lusak as she takes the wire to wire win again with all the pressure of this NCAA championship. Madison Hoffman had put down such a fine run but Lusak doing just enough to maintain that lead and taking the win for the University of Colorado and a two-time winner. It's now happening back-to-back -back years. It's a rare feat to win both the giant slalom and the slalom here at these NCAA championships. Madison Hoffman did it last year in white face and Magdalena Lusak does it this year in Steamboat. As we get a look at our top 10, again, we see Two Dartmouth skiers in the top 10, two University of Denver skiers in the top 10. That an important move for the University of Denver. Lusak for CU, that top spot in good shape. Hoffman getting second place really helps Utah in their quest to maintain that lead going into tomorrow and take home their fifth straight title. Also congrats to the University of Alaska Anchorage with their two top 10 performances there and now the updated team standings again these are unofficial as we look at the movement after the women's race the University of Utah continues to hold a healthy lead the University of Denver with those two skiers in the top 10 would make a move a little bit closer and the University of Colorado pretty much maintaining the status quo the win from Lusak helping tremendously but the other skiers from the University of Colorado, a little bit behind the pace from what they were hoping to close that gap for the University of Utah. Dartmouth College and Montana State still in the ballpark, but now the task is a big one for them 
And we saw the struggles from the University of Vermont, unfortunately, following out of the title contention. So we continue to work on the course up there, the women's course coming out of the snow, the men's course getting slipped and prepared. And could it be in the men's race, CU sweeping the individual titles today, Philip Volquist holds the lead on the men's side from the first run. That would be a treat for the host university. Declan McCormick and Jeremy Lagier close behind. Conditions absolutely ideal here tonight. The crowd's been fantastic. I love the leader's saddle that we've seen down there in the finish. An exciting way to highlight those top skiers in true steamboat style to have the saddle out. A true Western town here in Steamboat Springs. We usually see a little bit of rodeo on the slalom course. We see some beautiful Christmas lights in town as well. So one race left here for the Alpine skiers. And for our seniors, in their last year of collegiate racing, it's extra special. The experiences that these skiers carry with them from college and beyond, their memories from their time racing collegiately will never go away and the friendships and the networks that they make as collegiate skiers are far reaching and long lasting. It's still winter here in Colorado. Christmas Eve scene. Our Eastern colleges out here enjoying all the powder snow. It's been a tough late season. We know for those Eastern resorts. Very fortunate out here in Colorado with all the snow we've got. Final preparations on that men's course. It looks to me like all the hard work from the coaches, the extra water put on the hill. We've had a great racing surface. Take a look at some of our course crew. Going back up to the top. The work never stops late into the night here as we approach midnight out on the East Coast. Such a special feeling under the lights here at Howlson Hill. There's really nothing like it. Baseball field out there. Banana Field where the team title will be awarded tomorrow as we look at the top 10 from the men's first run Two skiers from the University of Vermont in the top 10, two skiers from the University of New Hampshire, and two from the University of Denver. As we consider the team implications, those first run results, the University of Denver doing a good job tonight, potentially making a move. But again, I think both, all the teams looking up at Utah at the top, wondering if they're gonna flinch, wondering if there's going to be a mistake. And so far, they have been rock solid. Coaches JJ and Mary should be, they've done a good job preparing the team this year. And they are skiing well out here in Steamboat. Smiles all over. I had a chance to walk around in the crowd between runs. 
and just everybody's so happy to be here. It's turned out to be a perfect night. Temperatures in the 20s. That set the snow up well, but no wind. Clear skies. Fire pits down here, keeping everybody warm. The kids are making s'mores. Several alumni groups with their tents down near the base area, having a great time celebrating this collegiate ski racing. The late night for the kids. The kids in Steamboat had a couple extra days off this week. So it's all right to stay up late. Shout out to any of the kids out on the East Coast that are staying up to watch this live stream at NCAA.com. Get to stay up past midnight. Hey, watching ski racing, that's a good excuse for staying up late as far as I'm concerned. Kids out here having a good time. It sounds like the race jury's got the course ready to go. Our forerunners are getting the clear. Chase Seymour, a senior from the University of Colorado, is going to be our first forerunner. Chase not qualifying for these championships this year. But he is rooting on his brother, Trey. He's in 28th position, racing for the University of Denver. So this will be our first look at this men's second run course set by University of Denver coach Jonas Razanen. And right off the bat, we see a little bit more swing across the hill. A bit more of a technical challenge. Again, the men and the women switching sides, so... The men on this side have a little bit of a flat in the middle section. And then steep with left-footed fallaways on the lower section. Horse looks like it runs well down here. Chase doing a nice job making sure everything's clear. And putting on a show for the crowd. This is big for the forerunners too. A chance to ski in front of a big crowd like this. They don't often get this opportunity. It's gonna be Loic Chablis, our first racer out of the gate. A couple of our men's racers doing some hiking in that first run to get through all the gates. So some skiers that really don't have any chance at pressuring our first run leader, Philip Balquist. But as I look at the results from the first run, there are 23 skiers within two seconds of Valquist. Nine skiers within one second. This race is still wide open. So our third forerunner coming through the finish. One more forerunner. Forerunner showing you that it's not easy out here, folks. This guy's got a couple wins on the fifth circuit under his belt, and he's having some trouble up there. So for our top racers still ahead, Maybe the edge is not quite prepared for this watered surface. I'm thinking that Loic is ready, though. You know, the opportunity after a big mistake for Loic. He gets to run a clean course. That's always fun. He gets to put on a show for the crowd. That's always fun. It's his senior year at Westminster College. So as he waits his start, he reflects on his collegiate ski racing career. And now an opportunity to just relax and enjoy the moment. Your final run as a Westminster College racer. Put a good one down to remember. 
And we're underway for the men's second run here at the NCAA Championships. Men's slalom. Blake Chablis from Switzerland, our first racer on this second run. Been on the national team for Switzerland. He was fourth at the World University Games last year. But the big mistake on the first run means that Loic is just having a fun second run here, and it's a good run indeed. A challenging course here on the second run, but Loic's handling it well. And he'll cross the line. Obviously taking our lead. Have a seat while you got the opportunity in that leader's chair, Loic. It's Harrison Deganji now on course. Deganji from Colby College. He too having some serious problems in that first run. The freshman from Stratton, Vermont having another bobble there. Oh, and Deganji. A quick hike back up the hill to get around that gate, and now he's going again. Deganji's had such a great season. Part of the EISA All East team this year. Loves watching Lori Taylor from Great Britain ski slalom. Deganji looking good on the lower section. You know, I love it when these guys hike so they can put it through the finish. And Deganji skied himself some fine final turns for this collegiate season down there. Well done. Now it's Ivor Nays from the University of Nevada, Reno. Ivor, too, with some problems in that first run, had to hike up around a gate. But a good clean run here. He had a 12 second advantage over Loic, who's sitting in the leader's saddle right now. So Ivor just needs to put down a clean run to get on that saddle. Enjoy the moment in the spotlight. He's a junior there at the University of Nevada, Reno. So hoping to be back next year at these NCAA championships. Nay, skiing a good run. And he'll cross the line with the fastest run so far and that moves him into the lead have a seat on the leader chair now gray flanagan racing for saint michael's college gray only knows one speed and that's all out in the first run it was getting into some trouble he's finding himself late and low on a few turns this course requires a little more turn shape we see gray working off the tail of the ski but keeping his upper body quiet to help him maintain balance. Now onto the lower pitch comes Flanagan. This run cleaner than his first. Gray Flanagan. Good solid skiing down here. Should be enough. And into the lead he goes. A chance to sit in the leader chair for Gray Flanagan. But now Isaac starts set. We take a jump in sometimes. Again, those first few racers all had some trouble in the first run. Now we're to the skiers that had clean runs. Star set. Charging on that upper section. The Montana State Bobcat. Going for broke on this second run. Oh. All kinds of trouble for Star Set there in the middle section. Oh, and down on his side again. These athletes having some trouble on the second run. The first run definitely more forgiving. The course didn't go back and forth so much. But the snow is slick up there. If the skiers get inside with these bigger turns, they're on their side before they know it. The hill's too steep to recover. Star set goes through the finish, but not going to be in the points today, likely. Perhaps one or two for the Bobcats. And now it's the University of Denver's Trey Seymour, the hometown boy on course. Seymour really letting him run. 
channeling that energy from his older brother, Jet, competing on the World Cup, scoring points in four races this season on the World Cup. Really starting that turnaround for the U.S. Ski, slalom ski team. Seymour always looking so strong. His first run looked technically excellent, but I think a little heavy with his pressure. I expected him to be faster. Again, good skiing here for Seymour. This looks good. Charging to the line is Seymour, and he moves into the lead. Take a seat in that leader's saddle, Trey. You've earned it. Now Bodie Flanagan again. The two Steamboat locals going back to back again here on this second run. Bodie and Trey, both longtime Steamboat Springs Winter Sports Club racers, grew up here in Steamboat. They know this hill well. Bodie Flanagan so fired up for this opportunity to race for Boston College and show off in front of the hometown crowd. Across the saddle comes Flanagan. This is a good looking run. The double pull plant to keep his balance. Flanagan down towards the lower section. Getting bucked on those turns just a little bit. Cat-like reflexes to stay on course. He really rolls those skis over with the knees and ankles and Flanagan reaches across the line and into the top spot. Bodie Flanagan. Have a seat on the leader's saddle. Nolan Sweeney, he's ready to go. Looking loose and relaxed up top. Look at the energy from these turns up top and Bo getting bucked wide. Those skis, maybe the feet came together. The skis went out from underneath him and I don't know how he stayed on his feet. A great recovery from Sweeney, the Colby College skier. He's still got it going. This is fast skiing. That was a big mistake, but oh no. He was skiing such a razor thin margin, the feet so close to the gates. A little bit inside there in that flush. He just couldn't quite get around those gates. The rhythm changes here in these flush. About six meters apart, the turns in the flush, whereas these open gate turns are closer to nine, 10 meters. So Nolan just did not have room to get those feet around the gates. He's gonna finish it though. The NCAA championships, these athletes wanna get through the finish and the crowd at the bottom. A little high five there for Bodie, sitting on the leader saddle. And now it's time for Roman Frost from Westminster College. Felt bad for him and the giant slalom not getting that second run with the uniform issue. But in the slalom, he's done the work and now he's got a second run and a chance to compete in front of the big crowd here at the bottom of Howlson Hill. The Westminster College skier looking strong on the top. Frost, a German skier, freshman for Westminster College. He's got a bright future ahead of him here on the NCAA circuit. This is good looking skiing from the Westminster College racer. Nice light on his feet, keeping those skis so close together, so tight on the poles, Frost across the line and into first place. Roman Frost gets his turn on the leader saddle. Syndra Michael Bus now our next racer to go. Syndra from the University of Utah, our first youth that we get to see here in the men's second run. A good start for Michael Bust. What a great day for him on Wednesday. That second place finish. Now a role player today. Get us a solid finish. Keep the point train coming here and take the load off our Nordic team tomorrow in the mass start. Michael Bust, an integral part of the Utes Goal of reaching five straight NCAA titles. Michael Bus skiing well, making some recoveries to stay in it. But this is savvy skiing for Michael Bust. The University of Utah Ute doing a fine job down here. Five gates to go. And Michael Bust through the finish. 
and he's done his job. It's into second place, but he's done his job securing critical points for his team. As Hayden Dahl now on course from the University of New Hampshire. Good solid skiing up top, Dahl. Just nice and quiet with that upper body. The legs move back and forth underneath. Little few slidey turns there at the top of the second pitch. Dahl trying to keep the momentum. The senior from Plymouth, New Hampshire, wrapping up his collegiate career in style, racing for his home university into second position by just 16 hundredths of a second. And now we go to the top. We look for Charlie Lang, Middlebury College racer. Lang, quick tempo up there, quick foot to foot. Through that upper section now across the saddle he comes. Through that hand, flush. And now on to the lower pitch. The camera doesn't do it justice. That section is steep in there, Lang. Handling well, the senior from Norwich, Vermont. Come on, Charlie. Let's get this senior home with a great performance. That's aggressive skiing. What a way to wrap up your career, Charlie. And into the leader's saddle you go. Well done for the Middlebury College skier. Jan Rohner now, our next competitor to start. Jan a junior from Austria, studying finance. He's doing well on the upper section. In tempo through that section, the rhythm suits him well. Rohner has skied well on the upper pitch. Across the saddle he comes, kind of the sideways flush there, sets up the lower pitch for Rohner, getting a little bit late on one turn, but I think he's carrying his momentum well. The University of Alaska Sea Wolf charging down here towards the finish. Rohner moving to the line and Rohner will cross into fifth position. Now we're back to the University of Utah, Rafael Lassard, the Canadian. Lassard, good and solid on the upper pitch. The shoulders forward, the upper body quiet as Lassard moves back and forth. The magic feet of slalom for Lassard. Onto the lower pitch he comes. The upper section has gone well. The University of Utah looking for some more solid finishes. Keep them in the lead going into the final day. That would be a great spot to be for their quest for five in a row. And Lassard moves into the top spot by just three hundredths of a second. But place is all that matters at this point. Well done by Lassard. Now Max Martin takes to the course from the from Dartmouth College. Martin 19th fastest from that first run. He'd love to pick up a few spots here on the second. Dynamic skiing on the upper section, a little bit behind, but he's keeping it on course. Max Martin really letting it run. The Dartmouth skier now onto the lower section. Charging hard to the line, Max Martin will cross. And into fifth position for Martin. Sard catching his breath on that leader saddle and now it's the University of Colorado's Etienne Mazillier. 
Big moment here for the freshman skier from Canada. It's Ryder Sarchet. I apologize. Getting ahead of myself here. Ryder Sarchet from Sun Valley, Idaho. Should recognize that trademark style from Ryder. Dynamic in the lower body, driving those knees through the pole. Ryder Sarchet. Skiing himself a fine run down here. The University of Colorado Buffaloes need something big. Sarchette has done his job in the slalom as he reaches to the line into the top spot. Goes Sarchette by a quarter of a second. Have a seat on that leader saddle rider. What a ride it has been for Ryder here in these NCAA championships. That's a job well done in the slalom. Now on course, it's Bradshaw Underhill from Middlebury College. Oh, and Bradshaw just getting stuck there on the edge. Having to carve a big old J turn to get back up to that flush. Not what he was hoping for here in the second run, but Underhill back on course now. So difficult to refocus after a mistake like that. But in collegiate racing, these skiers want to get to the finish line, earn some points for their team. Bradshaw goes down on the side again, but quickly back up. It's been tough for Underhill on this run today, but it's been a good season for him overall. As Bradshaw Underhill from Middlebury College reaches across the line, drops back into 14th at the moment, but maybe he picks up a point or two for his team. Now it's Mazillier from the University of Colorado. We've got CU on the leader saddle at the bottom. Mazillier would love to join his teammate. Can we get Buffaloes one and two? Little bobble there at the top of the pitch for Mazillier, but quickly back up to speed. You see Mazillier working off the tails of the ski just a little bit. Having a hard time keeping his four out balance but he's really challenging himself to keep things going down the hill. A little sideways there again in that steep section. Mazillier doing his best down here, but to me, a few mistakes up there on the upper part of the course as Mazillier reaches across the line and into eighth position he goes. All right, now we've got from the University of Vermont, Kyle Alexander. He impressed me with his slalom skills in that first run. I'm used to watching Kyle tear up the speed events. His GS has been strong, but his slalom skiing has really improved here. Talked about it the first run in Garmisch. He collected his first World Cup point in Super G in January. Oh, and down goes Alexander. Those close slalom gates. Not to his liking here on the second run. That's a tough break for Alexander. So now it's Dan Gillis' turn. Racing for Dartmouth College. Gillis, quick out of the start up there. Little old school turn through that delay coming on to this first pitch. Doing the inside arm clear. Gillis has got all the tools in his tool belt. As he charges down the upper section towards the saddle. It's a good solid run from Gillis. Ryder Sarchette was phenomenal down here. He sits in the leader saddle right now and Gillis just every turn. One turn he was using the last 20 centimeters. The next turn he was using the last 10 centimeters and then he ran out of the centimeters to hold himself up. And Gillis down and off course tough break for the Dartmouth skier. Anything can happen in slalom just when you think you're safe. Something like that happens. And Oscar Zimmer now looking to have a little better fortune than his teammate before him. Zimmer doing a nice job on the upper pitch. His feet quick back and forth. The sophomore from Norway. Zimmer 
Two mistakes in there. He's really charging hard. It was a great run from Sarchette. Is this going to be enough to get on the leader's saddle for the Dartmouth racer? Oscar Zimmer charging to the line. And into first place goes Zimmer. Nearly a half second the advantage over Sarchette. As the Dartmouth skier takes to the leader saddle, Leon Nikic pushes out of the start. We're down to our top 12. Nikic racing for the University of Alaska Anchorage. Nikic, a senior studying psychology. It makes me wonder, these students studying psychology, does it help them in the moment when the pressure's high? So difficult to control the mind and the focus in these high pressure moments. But Nikic doing well here on this second run. He'd love to get into the top 10. He's in touch close enough that he could make a more substantial move than that with a great run here. Nikic skiing well as he reaches across the line, but no, into 30 goes. It's been a great season for the senior Seawolf. Jean-Luc Boom now on course for Montana State. Down to the top 11. Boom 1.04 back after the first run. The quiet style. The hips stay level through his turns. Allows his skis to go back and forth. Boom making, maintaining excellent balance over his skis. A little bit sideways coming out of the hairpin there and another twisty turn coming onto that lower pitch. But now he's got it righted again. The skis pointed down the fall line. Boom. Charging toward the finish. Can the Bobcats move on to the leader saddle? Not enough for Boom. He moves into third position. So Magnus Dyron Berge now from the University of Vermont on course. Styron really charging up here on this top section. He's got the green light to go for the win. Vermont's had some trouble here today. So it'll take a huge result from Styron to really shift their fortunes. And he's really getting after it. This is dynamic skiing. Styron really putting the hammer down. He's happy that they put the water on this slope, make it a little more like the Eastern conditions that he's used to training on. And Styron makes his way towards the finish and he'll cross into second position. So Zimmer from Dartmouth continuing to hold on to the top spot is Isaac Hedstrom from the University of New Hampshire takes his turn on the Howelson Hill Slope. Headstrom within a second of our first run leader, but a straddle up there. And down he goes. He decides that's a little too far to hike. Ah, disappointment for Headstrom. Headstrom is out. Hunter Brayton now from the University of New Hampshire pushing on course. Brayton putting the hammer down on the upper section. Less than a second out. Could Brayton put down a run to make it a little more nervy for the skiers up top? He's skiing well down here. Brayton, a strong skier. Oh, getting a little bit low there on the next pitch, though. The camera angle makes it difficult to tell how steep that is, and the hill falls away to the left. But Brayton, the grad student, studying for his MBA at the University of New Hampshire. Really wanted to put down a good run. That was solid, but it'll move him into sixth position at the moment. And now it's Christian Sovic. He's been so clutch. The great third place performance in the giant slalom for the freshman at the University of Denver. Norwegian from Oslo. Getting low, but maintaining that momentum. 
Really letting the skis run. A nice touch for Sobic. Smart through the flush. Let's see if he takes advantage of that now through those difficult turns, and he does. It's within reach for Sovic, but it needs to be clean and precise down here through these final few turns. Sovic, University of Denver reaching to the line and into second position for Sovic. Oscar Zimmer continuing to hold on to the top spot. Now there's six left. It's Mikkel Solbakken from the University of Utah. Yesterday, Giant Slalom champion two days ago. Solbakken so critical to the success of these University of Utah Utes. A grad student now majoring in finance and fashion design. He's looking good up on the upper section. Solbach and skiing smart. Getting a little bit late there, but again, the hip stain level, he's able to make the recovery. Solbach and skiing with veteran savvy here, the University of Utah skier making his way towards the finish. Into second position. It's a solid performance for Solbach and just five hundredths of a second off our leader, Oscar Zimmer, at the moment. But here comes Tommy Hoffman, the University of Denver. Hoffman, the Australian, he's a sophomore racing for the Pioneers. And Hoffman would really love to put down a run to challenge our top skiers. DU needs a strong performance from Hoffman right now. And Hoffman looks up to the task on the upper section. That's good skiing, precise in his turns, clean, getting a little bit low coming out of the flush. But that was veteran right there. He just kept with the tempo and tried not to pressure those skis too hard. It was late through that whole section. He's running a direct line, but didn't let his skis slow down too much in any one turn. And Hoffman crosses the mistakes do catch up to him as he moves into fourth position at the moment. Four skiers left. Simon Strand from St. Michael's College pushing out of the gate. Oscar Zimmer, 13th fastest after the first run, still sitting in the leader saddle. Is Strand going to be the skier that finally knocks him off? Strand looking good up top. No significant mistakes up there. But Zimmer was so smooth down here. A little bobble for Strand. It magnifies in that section. It's steep and it falls away to the left. You've got to be so over your skis. Strand looks solid down here. Is it going to be enough as he approaches the line and Strand across snow into eighth spot? So Zimmer entered the run in 13th. He's guaranteed a top four. Is there just three skiers left? Jeremy Lagier from Westminster College, the French skier. Up next, he was 17th in the giant slalom two days ago, finished 12th in these NCAA championships last year. The senior for Westminster College who's really enjoyed his time racing collegiately here in the U.S. Now getting his last chance at these NCAA championships for something special. He's got his name on the Murphy Roberts Holiday Classic Trophy here at Howelson. He's won a slalom on this hill before with high level field, but that mistake right there for Lagier will cost him. He had some cushion over Zimmer from the first run, but is it enough? No. Back into fourth goes Lagier. Zimmer guaranteed a top three. As Declan McCormick now takes his turn. He was 1.01 seconds faster than Zimmer in that first run. So he's got a cushion right now, but his focus is on the title. The University of Vermont needs something special, and down goes McCormick. 
And just like that, the day over for McCormick. It can happen so fast. McCormick was going for broke. But hard to tell what happened. He had a bump there and all of a sudden he was head over heels. Oh, what a tough break for McCormick. And now there's one. The University of Colorado, Philip Volquist. Can he make it and see you on top for both men's and women's here at Howelson Hill today? His teammate Magdalena Lusak took the win earlier for the women. Balquist, he's got some time to play with 1.17, the advantage over Zimmer. It would be a huge feat if Zimmer could take the win from the 13th position after the first run. Balquist skiing well down here. He had some cushion. Getting a little bit wide there on that gate. But Volquist to me, has he done enough? I think he has as he reaches to the line across and we've got CU on top for the men, CU on top for the women. Volquist taking victory here at the slalom. Your new NCAA slalom champion. Congratulations, Philip Volquist. Congratulations, University of Colorado. What a day for Oscar Zimmer moving up into that second position and Mikkel Solbakken, the unflappable University of Utah skier, finishing in third. What a fantastic race. The excitement was there as we expected. The slalom though in the books here. As Volquist celebrates with his teammates and fans, a great scene here at the bottom of Howelson Hill. As the University of Colorado takes both individual titles. That was key for Colorado's hopes moving into the final day of competition. The Mass Start Classic tomorrow. As we look at the standings, we see two University of Colorado skiers in the top 10 to University of Denver skiers in the top 10. But the Utes, just so solid, Solbakken with that top three, helping preserve the team lead for Utah as day three wraps up. But congratulations also to Oscar Zimmer from Dartmouth College. What a move on that second run from 13th all the way up into second. Great performance for him. The crowd down at the bottom. It's such an intimate setting here at the base of Howelson Hill. The fans so close. The leader's saddle. A moment for Volquist to celebrate. The hug still going around for the University of Colorado at the finish. Oscar Zimmer in the celebration as well. He's got a lot to be proud of from today's performance. Just great racing out there under the lights, dealing with the pressure so well. As we present the New team leaderboard. This is unofficial as the protest period um, and the referee reports from the second runs have not yet expired. But as the standings stand at the moment, it's the University of Denver that's closed the gap a little bit on Utah and moves into second position. The University of Colorado has stepped up a few points, but still a pretty significant gap behind the Utes who have just been so steady throughout this competition each day. And today, it was doing the job they had to do. A lot of times, Howelson Hill presents a challenge. You get a skier or two that goes down and off course, and all of a sudden, the results have turned on their head. But not for Utah. We saw them ski well. We saw them ski smart. They were aggressive. They took chances where they could, but they skied smart where they had to play it safe. And so they maintain the lead going into the Mass Start Classic race tomorrow. And it's gonna be thrilling out there 
but could the University of Utah make it five for five? I find it interesting that the University of Denver made their move today. You know, they have won the last three NCAA championship events held here in Steamboat Springs. They're still in touch. And then, of course, the host university would love to have their crack at it, but it's going to need to be a big day for the Nordic skiers tomorrow. Perfect night for racing here in Steamboat. Howelson Hill, again, proving to be a worthy slalom test for these NCA competitors. We're getting ready for the awards. We'll, we'll present our top eight women and our top eight men with their trophies. And then we look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow at noon Eastern for the classic mass start finale to these NCAA championships. My name's John Nolting. It's been great celebrating these Alpine skiers with you. Thanks for tuning in on NCAA.com, and we'll see you for the awards. Yeah. In sixth place, representing the Middlebury Panthers, Mika Ann Reha.
pick. Go to FM White and Sons and they will give you the correct size. Hell yeah. That includes the John song. And now for the men in eighth place representing the University of Colorado Boulder Buffaloes, Ryder Sorcet! Ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 